that there is a little bit of, uh, of tension. And one thing that really struck me was there was a poll, I believe it was a Gallup poll that came out in March of this year uh, that asked Democrats who they sympathize more with, Palestine or Israel. And for the first mm -hmm. time ever, uh, more Democrats said they sided with Palestine. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's before this attack happened. Obviously, right. no one just, just because they say they prefer Palestine would condone terrorist attack. Even so, uh, you know, there's some, there's some tension there and there have been some statements. Uh, there's been a few things by like the squad members that were, right. that were seen as sort of equivocating. Mm -hmm. Definitely some like college students, college student groups right. uh, saying uh, some anti-Israel things, very mm -hmm. controversial. And so, yeah, the question was, you know, okay, how's Biden going to handle this? Is he going to be trying to uh, equivocate at all? And he uh, has not. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by White House reporter Hasten Willis. Hey, Hasten, President Biden has now another crisis that he has to confront. There's the Hamas attack on Israel, the Israeli counteroffensive. What sorts of things has the president been saying in support of Israel? Uh, Biden's taken a pretty strong, uh, aggressive stance uh, in Israel. This is something that where Biden has a long, long history, even by President Biden standards. Right. He made a speech uh, earlier this week, or he's really made two speeches already. Uh, but the, the first one he made, he talked about the first time he visited the country. It was 1973. He was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he had just been elected senator from Delaware, and he went and met uh, with the uh, prime minister at the time of Israel. So he told this really powerful story, shared that experience. Uh, but he, again, has visited several times since then. Uh, he's said he's known um, Netanyahu, I think since like the 80s. He's got a long, uh, long history there. And he's come out and been very, uh, very strong, very clear pro-Israel. We stand behind Israel. We have Israel's back, uh, very much getting behind them uh, in the early days. So obviously there are some elements of the Democratic Party. We haven't heard very much of this, but there are some elements of the Democratic Party that are not quite as on board with the Israeli side of the conflict, but certainly maybe not defending terrorist attacks, but more sympathetic to Palestinian political objectives mm -hmm. in the region. And the president has so far, seems to be keeping most Democrats to, uh, hewed to the White House line, no? Uh, seems like it. Yeah, that's something I wrote about earlier in the week. There is a little bit of, uh, of tension. And one thing that really struck me was there was a poll, I believe it was a Gallup poll that came out in March of this year uh, that asked Democrats who they sympathize more with, Palestine or Israel. And for the first mm -hmm. time ever, uh, more Democrats said they sided with Palestine. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's before this attack happened. Obviously, right. no one just, just because they say they prefer Palestine would condone terrorist attack. Even so, uh, you know, there's some, there's some tension there and there have been some statements. Uh, there's been a few things by like the squad members that were, right. that were seen as sort of equivocating. Mm -hmm. Definitely some like college students, college student groups right. uh, saying uh, some anti-Israel things, very mm -hmm. controversial. And so, yeah, the question was, you know, okay, how's Biden going to handle this? Is he going to be trying to uh, equivocate at all? And he uh, has not. He's been, again, very much uh, pro-Israel with this. I talked to a Democratic strategist about this the other day. He had a really interesting take on this. He thought it was uh, basically a smart move uh, for Joe Biden. One, is to take a clear stance just in general uh, is good for a leader to do. And two, he thought this would help him really with people. He thought he would gain more people in the middle who were pro-Israel than he might lose on the left fringe who are strongly anti-Israel, if that makes sense. So that's mm -hmm. what Biden has done uh, so far. We'll see how things go, uh, you know, as this kind of gets further along, but he's been very solid on this uh, to date. So while all of this has been going on, the president hasn't stopped talking about the economy and domestic policy and Bidenomics, mm -hmm. that has remained a major focus of his public schedule. But of course, this is all happening against uh, the backdrop of some mixed news on inflation. What has Biden been talking about when he talks about the state of the economy right now? He's been talking about Bidenomics, of course, mm -hmm. the big buzzword they've been uh they've been promoting since the middle of the summer. Um, and yeah, they haven't really slowed down on that. There's actually uh, three days in a row they've held uh, economics fo focused uh, events that Biden has been uh, talking about. He'd be doing a speech in Philadelphia, talking about uh, how he's helping out the economy. But right, uh, so inflation numbers have come back out uh, and inflation is still uh, still high. It's kind of stuck at this like just a little bit too high level, like mm -hmm. at 4%, which is lower than it was last year. It got all the way up to 9%, but it's still sure. double what they want it to be. Ultimately, the Fed wants it to be at 2%. They keep right. doing uh, 
uh, hiking interest rates, and it doesn't seem to be working yet. So that's kind of the question, what do they do there? Obviously, Republicans are ready to, to talk about this when these numbers come out. They say, you know, buy inflation. Mm -hmm. They talk about the American Rescue Plan, which is this big uh, spending bill passed right after Biden took office. Only Democratic votes, no Republicans voted for that, saying right. that uh, this big spending is to blame. So it's still gonna be a problem for him. Uh, he's, he's playing up the economy, saying it's good. The other thing, of course, is that his polling is not very strong on the economy. Right. Run the risk of him saying the economy is great. If voters don't agree, mm -hmm. uh, that could cause a lot of problems for the president. So inflation has been one enduring problem for Biden for much of his presidency, but perhaps the most enduring problem, political crisis he's had to deal with has been at the border, mm -hmm. uh, which Republicans also argue is a self-inflicted crisis. But it started to create some tensions with fellow Democrats as well. Uh, it has, yeah. Those are kind of the two I think Biden struggles with the most, the economy and then uh, especially immigration. Now, immigration is something maybe uh, your average person is uh, less politically involved in, is not talking about as much. But uh, as far as his approval rating, I believe in immigration is one of his lowest on people who do mm -hmm. pay attention to it, that mm -hmm. he's doing a really, really bad job. He's been getting more heat from this um, from the left. There have been uh, more immigrants moving into uh, Blue City, Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C. There's been uh, voluntary busing programs run by red state leaders uh, that have led people, help them to, to get into those areas, you know, right. to try to basically bring the issue to them. Uh, so Biden has finally s sort of turned around on this. He's doing uh, deportation flights of Venezuelan nationals back to Venezuela. And actually, his administration has announced they're going to start building some of the border wall. Obviously, big headline there, right? Because Biden was so big on not building the border wall. He said in 2020, not another foot. Uh, they're going to do 20 more miles. That's a lot more than a foot. So he's, right. he's turning around on that. Maybe a situation again where he's sort of tacking to the middle, uh, wants to kind of keep that uh, in his corner because he's getting beat up quite a bit from the right on the immigration issue. Thank you, Hasten. You can read Haston and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.